and myself and we also had to meet with her abuser and in a room in this kingdom hall where we're standing now the abuser said no I didn't do that uh, his wife said no he didn't do that because she was there and Karen had to say in front of the two elders this is what he did to me and at the end of that meeting the two elders report back to the uh, the whole body of elders and they have to decide if there's a case to answer uh, that did take place and um, it was decided that since it was only Karen's word against his and Jehovah's Witnesses require two witnesses to any um, sin then no action could be taken the two witness rule meant no action was taken against Karen's abuser for many years Ross Blackman the ex Jehovah's Witness who is now a Church of Scotland minister told me where this belief comes from the Jehovah's Witnesses try to root their beliefs in scripture and unlike most denominations, they'll, they'll pick on certain verses and, and lay them with higher order than others, perhaps. And this is perhaps one good example of that. I mean, the two witness rule you do find in, in Old Testament. Uh, you find it in the book of Deuteronomy in a couple of different chapters. The first example, Deuteronomy 17, talks about uh, in the case of um, the death penalty, actually, that they wouldn't give the death penalty to someone where there wasn't two witnesses. And you can perhaps understand why that might be a, a, a prudent way of going on. But other places as well, in, in the epistles, in Corinthians and in Timothy, there are examples of two witnesses being expected to, to prove certain behaviours, especially if someone in authority, an elder in the congregation, were being accused of something where you would want to have two witnesses of a kind of behaviour. The Watchtower, the headquarters of the Jehovah's Witnesses in the UK, declined to be interviewed for this program, but they did send me a statement. It says that they abhor child abuse, and they view it as a heinous crime and a sin. Congregation elders do not shield abusers from the authorities or from the consequences of their actions. I'm David Cook, and for Heart and Soul from the BBC World Service, I'm on my way to meet a lawyer in London who believes the Jehovah's Witnesses have a crisis that's on a par with the abuse allegations that have hit the Catholic Church. Certainly the numbers of Jehovah's Witnesses worldwide are not as great as, as the number of Catholics. However, when you look at the level of cover-up and the steps and lengths that the Jehovah's Witnesses are willing to go to to try and avoid disclosing documents, then I think that this is a scandal on that level. Kathleen Hallisey is a senior solicitor with the law firm Bolt, Bird and Kemp. In 2015, she represented a survivor of sexual abuse in the UK's first civil case brought against the Jehovah's Witnesses. We know that reports are made to the Watchtower here in the UK, and that's true around the world. And a record is kept of that report of abuse or alleged abuse, but those documents are never turned over to authorities. When they find or they're made aware of an allegation of child sexual abuse, how is that process managed? What do we know about it? If there's an allegation of child sexual abuse made to the elders of the congregation, we know that the first thing that they're directed to do is to contact the Watchtower headquarters here in London to be given direction by the legal department as to what steps to take. And they they then may, depending on the advice that they receive, be directed to investigate the allegation. The concern with investigating the allegation is that this is where the two witness rule is implicated. So if there aren't two witnesses to the abuse, then the investigation goes no further. And it's a grave concern that there are hardly ever two witnesses to abuse, as we all know. And if that's a requirement for there to be an investigation and there's no report to the authorities about the allegation of abuse, then not only are children continuing to be abused, but the perpetrator is still out there able to reoffend. The Jehovah's Witnesses have been accused of failing to address recommendations from the Child Abuse Royal Commission a year and a half after a damning public hearing. Last year in Australia, a Royal Commission into Child Sex Abuse released a critical report into the Jehovah's Witnesses, and it was particularly scathing about the two-witness rule. The Commission found that this rule was devised more than 2,000 years ago and was still applied inflexibly even in the context of child sexual abuse. There were a range of other The report said the absolute commitment to the two-witness rule, as God's word, showed the Jehovah's Witnesses had a serious lack of understanding of the nature of child sexual abuse.
and their weak disciplinary system left perpetrators at large in the organisation and the community. When the Australian Royal Commission analysed the Jehovah's Witnesses' case files, they discovered evidence of 1,800 alleged victims of child sex abuse since the 1950s. There were also over a 1,000 alleged abusers listed in the files. Not one case, it concluded, had been reported to the police. I have an order of protection from the Superior Court of San Diego of California instructing that I can't talk about what I've got. I can tell you that I have four years' worth of records that relate to known sexual abusers within the Jehovah's Witnesses who were in positions of authority. Lawyer Erwin Zolkin has also managed to get access to thousands of documents detailing abuse allegations. A court order means he can't talk to me about the files, but he says they shine a light on the organization's policy to not report serious crimes to the police. Jehovah's Witnesses from birth, or from whenever they become Jehovah's Witnesses, are so indoctrinated to believe that they cannot trust the outside world. The outside world has been corrupted by Satan. So when they have a circumstance like abuse, they go to their elders. Who else would you go to but the righteous elders? And the elders will say to them, listen, this is, needs to be kept within the congregation. We don't want to bring reproach against Jehovah. You're not going to get Jehovah's Witnesses going to law enforcement and reporting. In a statement, the Jehovah's Witnesses in the UK told me that they are committed to doing all they can to prevent child abuse and to provide spiritual comfort to any who have suffered from this terrible sin and crime. The victim and his or her parents have the absolute right to report the matter to the governmental authorities. And whether the victim or parents decide to report the matter is not contingent on the number of witnesses. Now, Karen is remarkably um, philosophical about it. Yes, she's very angry about what happened to her. I'm now heading over to Swansea in South Wales with John Viney and we're going to meet his daughter, Karen, who was abused by an elder over 20 years ago. Her abuser was recently convicted. Nobody from the Jehovah's Witnesses told me to go to the police or advised me to. I knew I wanted to do it. And even when I had said to my dad that I wanted to do it, my dad still felt like he needed to contact the Jehovah's Witnesses to, to find out whether we were allowed to or not. They don't encourage you to do it by any means, and none of them came with me. None of them would be supportive. And how long did it take before action was finally taken against the guy who abused you? I think it was roughly about 28 years later when eventually I went to the police for a second time. And this time, he, when he was arrested, more victims came forward. So it ended up going to court this time and he was convicted. How long for? 14 years. Um, let me show you something, Karen. This is a document that was published in January of this year, 2017, and it's the Child Safeguarding Policy of Jehovah's Witnesses in the United Kingdom and the Republic of Ireland. Is this something that you've seen before? No, I don't think I have seen this, actually. In it, there's a number of statements about their policies and the definition of child abuse and the action that they will take, and it says that they abhor abuse of children. They're saying that people can go to the police do you think this represents a change of policy within the Jehovah's Witnesses? I wouldn't trust any document from them simply for the reason being that they still maintain the two witness rule. So if they suddenly were to say, OK, we appreciate that there aren't going to be two witnesses to sexual abuse and we're going to put that in a document, then I might be inclined to think, well, wow, this is, you know, they're really starting to understand it. According to the Jehovah's Witnesses' current child safeguarding policy, 